Hi everyone, it's Professor Primton, and in this video we're going to talk about introduction to differential equations. In the previous couple sections, we considered equations of the form dy dx equals 6x squared minus 4x, and we also considered equations of the form c prime of t equals negative 20 e to negative 0.5 times t. Each of these are called differential equations because they involve a derivative that's equal to a function. So you have dy dx, that's representing a derivative of a function y, and it's equal to this derivative. And c prime of t is representing the derivative of some function c of t, and it's given as a formula. In general, an equation is a differential equation if it involves an unknown function and one or more of its derivatives. So other examples of differential equations include dy dx equals some constant k times y, or y double prime subtract x times y prime plus x squared equals 5, and dy dx equals 2xy. Each of these are called differential equations. This first equation is called a first order equation because it involves the first derivative. Whereas this second equation, y double prime appears, so it involves the second derivative, so it's called a second order equation. And this last one involves just the first derivative, so, it, so it's also a first order equation. So in other words, if you have a differential equation that involves the first derivative but not the second derivative, it's called a first order equation. Whereas if you have an equation that involves the second derivative but not the third derivative, then it's called a second order equation. In this video, we're going to talk about how to solve basic differential equations to find a function that satisfies the equation and also an initial condition. So let's start off with differential equations. A differential equation is basically an equation that involves a derivative of a function and it allows us to express with a simple equation the relationship between the quantity, the function, and its rate of change, its derivative. So let's look at example one, rate of change for a bank account. Suppose that a bank pays 2% interest on its certificate of deposit, or CD, but it charges $20 annual fee for the account. Write an equation for the rate of change of the balance, capital B prime of T. The balance of the bank account will be called capital B of T, and it's not known. We just know that the units are in dollars. We're going to use the interest rate because the interest rate increases the balance of the account, and we're also going to use the annual fee because it decreases the account balance every year. Since the interest was given as 2% on the certificate of deposit, that means that each year the account will grow 2% in terms of interest. So 2% of the balance of the account will be calculated every year. So you're actually calculating 0 0.02 times the balance of the account, but the balance of the account is not given in the problem. So that's the function we want to find, capital B of T. So 0 0.02 times capital B of T, that's the interest every year. So the fee is actually an annual amount, it's $20 every year. So we have a differential equation that we can solve to find out the balance of the account. Capital B of T, that's representing the rate of change in the balance of the account, it's given as 0 0.02 times the original function for the balance of the account, capital B of T, and then you subtract 20 every year. So every year, the account balance is multiplied by 0 0.02, and then you subtract 20. And so that's the rate of change in the balance of the account in dollars per year. And since this equation involves the first derivative, it's called a first order differential equation. Notice in this last example that the particular equation involves both the derivative and the original function. It had b prime of t, but it also had capital B of t. However, we cannot find capital B of t using basic integration rules that we have previously discussed in the last two sections. One of the first things that we're going to talk about in this video is that there's a difference between solutions to differential equations versus solutions to algebraic equations. Algebraic equations that contain constants and variables, their solutions to the equation are real numbers. So if you have x equals 3 and x equals negative 2, their solutions to the algebraic equation x squared equals x plus 6, because if you plug in x equals 3 or if you plug in x equals negative 2 into this equation, you get a true statement. On the other hand, differential equations will contain derivatives or differentials of functions. Solutions of differential equations are actually functions. So the differential equation y prime equals 3x squared, we know that if we want to find out the function y, what is the function y so that its derivative is 3x squared, there are infinitely many solutions because you can have any function plus a constant. So two of the solutions could be these functions, y equals x cubed plus 2 because the derivative is 3x squared plus 0, and you can also have the solution be y equals x cubed subtract 4 because the derivative is also 3x squared plus 0 because we can tack on any constant and the derivative will just be zero. So since y prime is equal to 3x squared, there will be an infinite number of solutions, an infinite number of functions that satisfy this differential equation. What's important though, is whether you're solving a differential equation, whether it's easy or difficult to solve, we need to check that the possible solution really satisfies the differential equation. A solution of a differential equation can be checked by substituting the function into the differential equation by taking the appropriate derivatives 
and to show whether the equation is actually a true statement. So for example, y equals x squared is a solution to the differential equation x times y prime equals 2 times y, since y prime, the derivative of this function y equals x squared, the derivative is 2x. So if you plug 2x into this differential equation for the y prime, then you have the variable x times y prime, that's the function 2x, so x times 2x on the left-hand side of the equation, you get 2x squared. And on the right-hand side of the equation, you have 2 times the function y, so 2 times x squared, and so you get 2x squared on the left side of the equation and the right side of the equation, and so it's a true statement. So when you're checking your solution to differential equations, you're not plugging in real numbers. You're plugging in functions and seeing if the function on the left-hand side and the right-hand side of the differential equation gives you a true statement. So let's look at example two. Solution to a differential equation. Check that the following function is a solution to the given differential equation. Number one, the function is y equals x squared plus five, so that's the solution of the differential equation that we want to check. Is it the solution to this differential equation? y double prime plus y equals x squared plus seven. So we have a couple derivatives defined because we want to plug in for the second derivative. So if y is equal to x squared plus five, then the derivative y prime would be the derivative of x squared plus five, or the derivative of x squared is two x, the derivative of five is zero, and so y prime is 2x, but we notice we don't have y prime to plug in. We want to plug in for y double prime. So we need to find one more derivative. So y double prime would be the derivative of the first derivative. It would be the derivative of 2x or just 2. So now we have all the functions that we need to plug in to check to see whether this y equals x squared plus 5 is actually a solution to the differential equation. So the differential equation y double prime plus y equals x squared plus 7, we know that y double prime is 2, so plug in 2 for y double prime plus the function y that we need to plug in is x squared plus 5 that was given. Is it equal to x squared plus 7? That's what we need to check. So on the left-hand side, you have x squared plus 5 plus 2. That's really x squared plus 7. And so the left-hand side and the right-hand side are, of the equation are equal to each other. And so y equals x squared plus 5 is a solution to this differential equation. Now let's try one more. Number two, the function y equals x plus 5 divided by x. We're going to check whether this is a solution to this differential equation y prime plus y divided by x is equal to 2. So again, we have one derivative in the differential equation, so we want to find one derivative this time of the function y equals x plus 5 divided by x. So if y equals x plus 5 divided by x, we know we want to find out the derivative. So bring the x to the numerator, so that way it's a power function. You have x plus 5 times x to the negative 1. And so now we need to find the derivative of this function y. So the derivative of x is 1, and the derivative of 5 x to the negative 1, use the power rule and the constant multiple rule to get negative 5 x to the negative 2. Remember, if you take derivatives, you subtract 1 from the exponent. So bring the negative 1 down and make it a coefficient. So 5 times negative 1 gives you negative 5, and then you subtract 1 from the exponent. So negative 1 subtract 1 will give you negative 2. And so now if we rewrite this, it would be 1 subtract 5 divided by x squared. So this is the first derivative of the function that we think might be the solution to this differential equation. So if we want to check the solution to y prime plus y divided by x equals 2, replace the y prime with the derivative, 1 minus 5 divided by x squared, so that goes in for the y prime, plus y was the original function that we think is the solution. So y is equal to x plus 5 divided by x, that goes in the numerator, divided by x, so that's the variable, and is this equal to 2? So we have a little bit of algebra to do to actually simplify the left-hand side of the equation. So 1 minus 5 divided by x squared, that's the y prime, so let's not do anything with that yet. But then notice in the numerator of this fraction, we have to have a LCD before we can add x plus 5 divided by x. So that makes it x squared divided by x plus 5 divided by x, and that's all over x. And question mark above the equal sign because we don't know if this is equal to 2 yet. So now that we have a common denominator, we have x squared divided by x plus 5 divided by x. We can make this one fraction, so make it x squared plus 5 all divided by x. And this is still all divided by x in the denominator. And so 1 minus 5 divided by x squared plus x squared plus 5 divided by x, and then divide by x again, is this equal to 2? So if you want to simplify even further, you have this fraction divided by x. So that means you need to put x divided by 1 in the denominator, and now multiply by the reciprocal. So you have 1 minus 5 divided by x squared, that's the y prime unchanged, plus the numerator, x squared plus 5 divided by x, times the reciprocal of the denominator, which will be times 1 divided by x. Is this equal to 2? Well, we still need to simplify some more. We have y prime, 1 minus 5 divided by x squared, plus x squared plus 5. We have an x times x in the denominator that makes it x squared. Is this equal to 2? So notice on the left-hand side, we have x squared divided by x squared. That can be simplified. And we also have 5 divided by x squared. So we can break this up into two different fractions. So 1 minus 5 divided by x squared plus x squared divided by x squared. That will just be 1. 
plus 5 divided by x squared. So you have 1 minus 5 divided by x squared plus 1, that will give you 2, plus 5 divided by x squared minus 5 over x squared, that will cancel out, and so you get 1 plus 1 is 2, and so the right-hand side of the equation was 2, the left-hand side of the equation simplifies to 2, and so yes, y equals x plus 5 divided by x is a solution to the differential equation. So now that we know that differential equations, the solutions could be possibly functions that satisfy the differential equation, now let's talk about how to actually solve differential equations. So the first type of differential equation that we're going to talk about is called separable differential equation. A differential equation is called separable if the variables can be separated algebraically, so that means you can add or subtract, multiply or divide, so that the expressions containing the variable x and the differential dx are on one side of the equation, and the expressions containing the variable y and the differential dy are on the other side of the differential equation. In other words, you can have your differential equation be of this form. You have some function of x and only x times dx on the left-hand side of the equation, and you have another function that is only in terms of y times dy on the other side of the equation. Once a differential equation is separated, then the equation can be solved by integrating both sides of the equation. So you can take the indefinite integral on the left-hand side of the equation and the indefinite integral on the right side of the equation. So example three, we're going to solve separable differential equations. So find the general solution of the following separable differential equations. So general solution to a differential equation just means that we're going to have a constant of integration, capital C, involved in the solution. So number one, y prime equals 2 times x times y. What is the function y that will satisfy this differential equation? So that its derivative is 2 times x times the function itself. So after rewriting the y prime using the differentials dy and dx, then the equation becomes dy dx is equal to 2xy on the right-hand side of the equation. So notice you can treat the differential dx like it's a variable. So multiply both sides of the differential equation by dx. So you have dy on the left-hand side after dx divided by dx will just cancel out. And on the right-hand side, you have 2xy times dx. So on the left-hand side, we want the differential dy, but we also want a function of y on the left-hand side. And we want the differential dx on the right-hand side, but also a function of x on the right-hand side. So notice that we need to divide both sides of this equation by y so that the y is on the left-hand side of the equation and the x's will be on the right-hand side of the equation. So dy divided by y, after you divide both sides of the equation by y, is equal to 2x times dx on the right-hand side of the equation. So notice in this equation that everything in terms of y is on one side of the equation and everything in terms of x is on the other side of the equation, including the differentials dy and dx. And so now integrate both sides of the equation. So take the indefinite integral on the left-hand side of the equation, so integral dy divided by y is equal to the integral on the right side of the equation, 2x dx. So we have a couple integrals that we need to find. Let's find the family of integratives for this function, 1 divided by y dy, and we also need to find the family of integratives for the function 2x. So we know the integrative of 1 divided by y would be the natural log of the absolute value of y, because we don't know if y is either positive or negative, so it needs absolute value around the y. And on the right-hand side of the equation, you have 2 as a coefficient, so it stays, but then x is a power function, so add 1 to the exponent and also divide by the new exponent, and so you get x squared divided by 2. Now, don't forget about the constant of integration. You want to find the family of integrals that would satisfy this differential equation, so you need to add in plus c. So now notice, you can simplify the right-hand side of the equation. The 2's will cancel out, and so you have natural log, absolute value of y, is equal to x squared plus the constant of integration, capital C. We want to find out what is the function y that satisfies this differential equation. So we need to get y by itself now. We need to treat this like it's an equation where we need to solve for the function y. So how do you get y by itself? Well, it's inside the natural logarithm. So you need to take e and raise it to the power, natural log, absolute value of y on the left-hand side, and do the same thing on the right-hand side. Do e raised to the right-hand side of the equation. So e to the natural log, absolute value of y on the left-hand side of the equation is equal to e to the x squared plus c in the exponent on the right-hand side of the equation. So e and natural log are inverses of one another, so it will just be left with absolute value of y on the left-hand side of the equation. On the right-hand side of the equation, you have e to the x squared plus c in the exponent. And so now you have absolute value of y is equal to the right-hand side of the equation. Whenever you're adding exponents, you're really multiplying. So you have e to the x squared times e to the c. And then notice, if you have e to a constant, that's just another constant. You have a number that's being raised to another number. That's just a number. That's a real number. So let's just replace this e to the c power as just another constant of integration. So you have absolute value of y on the left-hand side of the equation. 
is equal to e to the x squared times some constant of integration. This is what's called a general solution. We don't know what the particular value of c is, but any function of this form will solve this differential equation, y prime equals 2 times x times y. So let's try something similar. Number 2, y prime is equal to 6x plus 1 in the numerator divided by 2y in the denominator. So again, this is called a separable differential equation because we can try to get the y's all on one side of the equation and all the x's on the other side of the equation. So after rewriting y prime using the Leibniz notation again, you have dy dx on the left-hand side of the equation is equal to 6x plus 1 divided by 2y. So notice that if you treat these like they're two different fractions, then you can cross multiply to get an equation that has x's on one side, including dx, and you also have the y's on the other side of the equation, including dy. So dy times 2y, that's the left-hand side of the equation, equals this differential times 6x plus 1 on the other side of the equation. So 6x plus 1 in parentheses times dx. So now we have all the y's on one side of the equation along with dy, and we have all the x's on the other side of the equation involving dx. So now we can integrate both sides of the equation. So take the integral of the left-hand side of the equation. So integral 2y dy is equal to, take the integral on the right side of the equation. So integral 6x plus 1 dx. So just like the last problem, we have a family of antiderivatives to define on either side of the equation. We want to find what is the family of antiderivatives for 2y and what is the family of antiderivatives for 6x plus 1. So on the left-hand side, the y is the variable of integration. So y is a power function. It's y to the first power. So if you want to find the antiderivative, you keep 2 as a coefficient, you add 1 to the exponent, and you divide by the same exponent. So 2 times y squared divided by 2 is equal to, on the other side of the equation, you have two different terms, so you can find the antiderivative of each term separately. You have 6 as a coefficient, so you keep it. x is the variable of integration, so x is the power function, is x to the first power. So find the antiderivative, add 1 to the exponent, and divide by the same exponent. So you have 6 times x squared divided by 2, and the antiderivative of 1 is just x. And don't forget about the constant of integration, you have plus c that you need to add to the end of the antiderivative. So now let's simplify. We have 2 divided by 2, that'll cancel out, and you have 6 divided by 2, that'll just be 3. So you have y squared is equal to 3x squared plus x plus c, and that's the general solution to this differential equation. Since we don't know what the value of c is from the problem, this is called a general solution. Any function of this form would satisfy this differential equation, y prime is equal to 6x plus 1 in the numerator divided by 2y. Before we talk about the next example, an initial value problem is a differential equation that provides additional information about an initial or starting value of the function. So if we know what the initial value of the function is, so if we plug in 0 for the x values and we find out what the y value is, then we can find out what is this constant of integration, and so we will have a single solution. And that's what's called a particular solution rather than a general solution. Example 4, initial value problem. The rate of growth of a population, capital P of T, which starts with 3,000 people and increases by 4% per year is this differential equation. Capital P prime of T is equal to 0.0392 times capital P of T. Solve the differential equation and use the solution to estimate the population in 20 years. So in the differential equation, capital P of T equals 0.0392 times capital P of T can be rewritten in terms of the variables X and Y. So P prime of T will be replaced with Y prime, and 0.0392 times P of T will become 0.0392 times Y. So we're replacing P prime of T with Y prime, and we're replacing capital P of T with Y. This will help us separate the equation so that the function X is on one side with DX, and the function in terms of Y times DY will be on the other side of the equation. So it becomes a separable differential equation. So Y prime will be replaced with DY DT, using Leibniz notation because everything was in terms of t, not x, is equal to 0.0392y. And now notice, if you multiply both sides of the equation by dt, you can get dt on the other side of the equation away from the dy. So dy is equal to 0.0392y times dt. And so now if you want to get the y's on one side of the equation, do what we did earlier in another example, divide both sides of the equation by y. So dy divided by y on the left-hand side is equal to 0.0392 times dt. So everything on the right-hand side will involve t, and everything on the left-hand side will involve y. So now that we have the differential equation separated, we can integrate both sides of the equation. So take the indefinite integral on the left-hand side, so integral of dy divided by y is equal to, take the integral on the right-hand side of the equation, the integral of 0.0392 dt. So we've talked about this before. The integral of 1 divided by y, where y is the variable of integration, that becomes natural log absolute value of y. And on the right-hand side of the equation, it's just a constant. 
So if the variable of integration is t, this becomes 0 0.0392 times t, and then don't forget about the constant of integration plus c for the family of antiderivatives. And so again, we've seen this before. If we want to find out what is the solution, we want to find out what is the function y. So we need to get y by itself. So take e to the left-hand side of the equation is equal to e to the right-hand side of the equation. So e to the left-hand side of the equation, so you get e to the natural log of absolute value of y in the exponent, is equal to e to the right-hand side of the equation as an exponent. You get e to the 0.0392t plus c. And so this is equal to, after e and natural log are inverses of one another, they cancel out. On the right-hand side of the equation, you have a sum in the exponent, and so that means you can rewrite this as a product of two different exponential expressions. You have e to the 0.0392t times e to the c. And so we've seen that e to the c is just a constant, so it becomes capital C times e to the 0.0392 times t on the right-hand side of the equation, and on the left-hand side of the equation, we have absolute value of y. This is a general solution because we don't know what the value of c is. However, notice in the problem that they tell us the population starts at 3,000 people. So we can use this information to find out what is the particular value of capital C for the constant of integration that will solve the differential equation. So since the population is represented as the variable y, we know that the population can never be a negative number. So we can drop the absolute value around the y and treat y as a positive number only. So instead of absolute value of y equals capital C times e to the 0.0392 times t, we can treat this as y equals capital C e to the 0.0392 times t. And so now use the initial value. If you plug in 0 for the value of t, that means the population was equal to 3,000. So if we replace the population with 3,000, whenever the t is 0, you'll get the equation c e to the 0.0392 times 0. So that's just e to the 0 times capital C is equal to the population was 3,000. So e to the 0 is 1, so capital C times 1 is equal to 3,000, and so just capital C is 3,000. We know that the function that satisfies this particular problem will be y equals 3,000 for the capital C, e to the 0.0392 times t. So now to answer the question that was in the problem, they want to know what is the population after 20 years. We can plug in 20 for the value of t, and we can find out what is the actual population approximation because we know what capital C is as well. So the population after 20 years will be p of 20, 3,000 was the value of c, e to the 0.0392 times 20 in the exponent, replacing the t, and so you'll get approximately 6,570.65. Or if you round to the nearest person, because this is talking about population, you get 6,571 people. It's worth noting, however, that in this example, the population will not be exactly right. The differential equation assumes continuous changes in the population, and it's not likely the population is continuous. However, the answer is actually likely close to this approximation, 6,571 people. The differential equation provides a relatively simple model for a complicated function such as population growth. So this is a good place to stop our video. Now we talked about what a solution to a differential equation might look like, and we also talked about how to solve separable differential equations, including an initial value problem for a separable differential equation. If you have any questions about any examples in this video, please let me know. Or if you have any questions while you work on homework for this section, please let me know that as well. And I'll see you at the next video when we talk about models of growth involving differential equations.